This service video covers 1971 to 1980 International Dana 44 open knuckle front axles. Remove cotter pins and nuts from the steering linkage. Then use QT1200I to separate the linkage from the knuckles. Place a drain pan under the axle and remove the differential cover bolts with a half inch socket. Then strike the cover with a soft hammer to dislodge it from the main axle housing. Use a quarter inch allen bit to remove the brake caliper key bolts and remove the keys and springs with a hammer and punch. Then use a pry bar to remove the caliper and hang it out of the way. Use a hammer and punch to open the lock washers and remove locking hub bolts with a 916 socket. Then remove the locking hub cap. Remove the axle shaft snap ring and slide the main locking hub assembly off the shaft. If equipped with worn automatic hubs, use a 564th Allen bit to back out the three set screws until they are flush with the outside of the spindle nut. If you do not have the special tool to remove the outer nut, you can use a large set of snap ring pliers as shown here. Remove the lock washer and use QT1011 to remove the inner spindle nut. Then remove the inner thrust washer and pull the hub off the spindle. QT1011 will also remove the outer spindle nut on non-automatic locking hubs. Remove the spindle retaining lock nuts and washers with a 916 socket. Then remove the brake shield and caliper support. Use QT1023 spindle puller and QT9308I slide hammer to remove the spindle. Remove the axle shaft assembly from the housing. Here's a different angle removing the spindle from the other side of the axle. <laughs> 
Here is an example of a lower ball joint stud that is not seated properly, which is caused by either improperly adjusted or worn out upper ball joint. Remove cotter keys and use an inch and an eighth socket to remove the lower ball joint nut and an inch and five sixteenths socket on the upper nut. Then use a suitable puller to separate the knuckle from the axle housing. Use QT1075 to remove the upper ball joint seat. Use a hammer and punch to mark differential bearing cap orientation. Loosen differential bolts and caps. Place QT1032 differential case spreader on the housing and relieve enough tension so the differential assembly can be removed from the axle. Note that overspreading the housing will result in permanent damage. Take that out without that tool? Not out of any differential? Damn, we're big enough pry bar. Measuring the differential case spreader will not give the most accurate reading of actual case spread. However, it is close enough for removal when there is limited space with the differential installed. Pro tip, leave the bearing caps loosely installed as you slowly spread the case. As soon as you are able to move the differential assembly, remove the caps and walk it out of the axle housing. Once the assembly is out, remove the case spreader from the housing. Leaving the housing spread for extended periods of time will result in permanent damage. Use QK4647 to remove the inner axle shaft seals. Use a inch and an eighth socket to remove the pinion nut. 
Then use a suitable puller to remove the pinion yoke. Install the differential cover with two bolts to catch the pinion shaft. Then drive the pinion shaft out with a hammer and punch. Use a seal puller to remove the pinion seal. Use a suitable punch to drive out inner and outer pinion bearing cups. Use a 7 16 inch wrench to remove the axle vent for cleaning. If it is missing the dust cap like this one, it will need to be replaced. Thoroughly clean the differential housing. The axle seal remover and shop rags can be used to clean out the axle tubes. Wash all parts. Pro tip, it is easier to disassemble main components after an initial cleanup. Once disassembled, the individual co components can be cleaned separately. Remove the axle shaft thrust washer and V-seal, then remove the spindle bearing with a blind hole puller and slide hammer. Use a seal puller to remove the hub seal and inner bearing. Remove the bearing cups with a suitable driver and hammer. You can see there are cast reliefs on the inside of this hub to aid in cup removal.
remove the wheel studs with a hammer and punch or shop press. Remove the lower ball joint snap ring and use a pick to clean around the joint pockets. This will prevent tool malfunction or damage in the next step. Use TS1259 ball joint press set to remove old ball joints. Remove old seals and thrust washers from the outer axle shaft and check for wear. Universal joints can be replaced using TS3085 small U-joint press set. Attach the C-frame press in a vise or holding fixture and secure the axle shaft assembly using the install tip to remove the snap rings. Pro tip. The install tip can be used to remo remove tension on rusted in snap rings. However, it should not be used to press out U-joint caps. When all snap rings are removed, swap out the install tip for the separator yoke. Align the assembly in the press and remove the first U-joint cap. The separator yoke removes one cap at a time and eliminates the chance of bending an axle shaft by pressing on two rusted caps at the same time. When the U-joint cross contacts the axle shaft, take out the axle shaft assembly and remove the cap. Then repeat on the opposite side. Pro tip, 
If the cap hangs up, strike the axle shaft with a small hammer to relieve tension. Using a cheap or worn out file, clean up any rust or burrs created from the U-joint cross contacting the axle shaft. You aren't trying to reface the machine's surface, just remove rust so new snap rings have a good place to seat. There we go. Take a still right off of that. Before pulling the inner pinion bearing, remove any remaining shims. Then use a suitable puller to remove the inner bearing. Using a suitable puller, remove the differential side bearings. Keep track of what shims come off each side of the differential. On a simple rebearing job, the exact shims will be reused in most cases. Use an 11 16 socket to remove ring gear bolts. Remove the ring gear using a soft hammer. Use QT9300 to remove the cross shaft roll pin. Push out the differential cross pin and remove the internal gears.
Inspect these parts for wear and replace as needed. Inspect the axle shaft seal surfaces for wear. Rust can be removed with fine emery cloth. Deep grooves may require shaft replacement. To service worn automatic locking hubs, first take the snap ring off the main hub body and then the thrust washer. The main pieces of the locking hub will then separate. Remove the spring and plastic friction inserts. Use locking pliers on a slide hammer to remove the shift guide pin. Compress the spring and use a pick to remove the shift nut. Remove the shift dial retaining snap ring. Remove inner and outer dial O-rings. Remove the outer spindle nut set screws and clean all parts. We are starting with the set screws so they don't get lost. Lubricate and reinstall the set screws. Examining the outer nut and lock washer, you will see that the hole orientation allows one set screw to engage in any position. Reassemble the friction inserts and spring. Note that one bearing roller guide is longer than the others. This is where the ends of the disengaging spring will sit. Grease the main hub body components and arrange them as shown here and stick the rollers into position. <laughs> 
install the return spring. Flip the main hub body over, install thrust washers and snap ring. Here is a close-up of the automatic engagement release spring in action. We decided to do a paint job on these dials. Here we are using the spindle lock washer and hub shift nut to protect the detent ball while the dial gets a bath in the tumbler. Here's the dial after its bath. Now it's off to the paint booth before reassembly. Lubricate the detent ball and install the O-rings. Apply a thin film of grease to the outer hub flange before inserting the dial. Insert the hub dial and note the guide pin hole location. This hole will be between the ears of the hub dial snap ring. It can be a little tricky to line up the snap ring, but this is what it should look like. Install the spring end gear. Make sure the spring plate notch is aligned with the guide pin hole. With the dial in the unlock position, compress the spring and install the nut until it bottoms out. Then loosen to the first notch for the guide pin. Install the pin so the end is flush with the inside of the dial. Check the operation and apply a thin film of grease to the gear and dial threads. Use TS1259 Ball Joint Toolkit to install QU40187 Spicer Ball Joint Kit. 
Install the lower ball joint snap ring. Install new TK40712U joints with TS3085U joint press set. Press the first cap in until the snap ring groove is about a quarter inch past the yoke. Then install the snap ring. This will allow the U joint cross to support needles in this cap and in the next cap you install. If the cap binds up when installing, tack the axle shaft with a hammer to relieve tension. Rotate the axle shaft and install the next cap. Snap rings can be rotated with a hammer and punch as needed to clear machine steps in the axle shaft. Once the axle shaft is assembled, seat the snap rings by striking the yoke with a hammer. The joints should rotate smoothly. Clean the differential housing. Using master bearings, place the differential carrier inside the housing and measure side to side movement with a dial indicator. This will give you a base number for shims needed. Install the inner bearing cup. Use QT1818 driver and QT1119 handle. Place the lightly oiled inner pinion bearing into the cup and rotate several times.
Our depth tool uses a calibrated block and magnetic landing plate. Place them on the bearing. Verify dial indicator calibration. Note the master and calibrated dimensions for your pinion depth tool from the user manual. Oil the adapter plates and install the dial indicator into the housing. Then install side bearing caps and finger tighten the bolts. Measure and record the indicated depth. Your user manual will list calibrated tool depths and math equations to find the amount of shims needed. We show the math here for our tool, but yours may be different. This method indicated we needed to add 71 thousandths of pinion depth shim. Measuring the original shims and slinger thickness, this axle had 77 thousandths of shim. Pretty close. Now we will do the same measurements with the pinion shaft installed. Measure and record the pinion head thickness. Place oil slinger onto the pinion shaft and install new inner bearing from TK4848 Differential and Pinion Bearing Kit using QT1044 Pinion Bearing Installer. Insert the pinion into the housing with the magnetic landing plate and install the calibrated dial indicator. Measure and record the indicated pinion depth. Refer to your user manual for proper equations and note the shims needed. Remember, this method will include the inner pinion slinger thickness, so the number will be different than the bearing only method. This equation resulted in needing 34 thousandths of shim with the slinger installed. Shims are placed under the inner pinion bearing cup for this axle. Coat differential gears and washers in oil and reinstall. Drive in the cross shaft and roll pin.
Install the ring gear onto the differential using new ring gear bolts. Torque to 45 to 60 foot pounds. Measure the thickness of your new differential bearing and cup and verify it against the master bearings used for preload and backlash setup. They should match, but if they don't, you will need to add or subtract the difference of total shims needed. Place the master bearings onto the loaded differential and install it in the housing. Slide the differential back and forth and measure with a dial indicator. This number is the amount of shims needed for the ring gear side of the differential. Subtract this number from the base number of shims needed that we measured earlier. The remainder of shims plus 10 to 15 thousandths of additional shims will go on the pinion gear side to set your backlash and preload. Use QT1812 driver and QT1119 handle to install the outer pinion bearing cup. <laughs> 
oil bearings and install pinion shaft with the original amount of pinion shims. Place the bearing over the shaft and install the pinion yoke. Here we are not installing the pinion seal and reusing the old nut and washer so we can check our pinion preload. Torque nut to 200 to 220 foot-pounds. Rotate the pinion several times and measure the preload. It should be between 20 and 40 inch pounds. If it's higher, add shims. If lower, remove shims. When desired rotating torque has been achieved, we can now add the outer pinion slinger and pinion seal on top of the outer pinion bearing. Use a suitable tool to drive on the seal, then reinstall the pinion shaft, yoke, new washer, and new lock nut. torque to 200 to 220 foot-pounds and verify rotating torque. It should be slightly higher with the added resistance of the seal lip. Use QK4872 tool and seal kit to install new axle shaft seals. Use a suitable tool to install the proper amount of shims and differential bearings. An adapter out of the ball joint press set works well for this. Use a dial indicator to measure the differential housing. Do not spread the housing more than 15 thousandths of an inch or permanent damage may result. I like to go about 10 thousandths of an inch and then tap the differential in with a soft hammer. <laughs> 
Install bearing caps and torque bolts to 70 to 90 foot-pounds, then remove the case spreader. Verify backlash is in the range of five to eight thousandths and adjust as needed. Install new QU40214 gasket and torque differential cover bolts to 15 to 25 foot-pounds. Be sure to replace any existing tags to their original location. Install the axle vent. If the tin cap is missing like on this one, replace it with new D440001 axle vent. Place the knuckle into the axle housing and install the lower ball joint nut and torque to 80 foot-pounds. Use a C-clamp to put tension on the lower ball joint stud so it does not rotate. Install the upper ball joint sleeve and torque to 50 foot-pounds. Then install and torque the upper ball joint nut to 100 foot-pounds. Advance to the nearest slot in the nut and install cotter key. Use QT1134 spindle bearing installer and QT1100 driver handle to install spindle bearings from QU40228 spindle bearing and seal kit. Install the small V-seal into the spindle and big V-seal over the axle shaft slinger. Then place the thrust washer over the axle shaft and lubricate all these components with wheel bearing grease. Coat the spindle flange and pile it with anti-seize, then install the spindles and axle shafts into the housing. Orient the spindle groove so it is vertical. Then install a caliper support and brake shield with a coat of anti-seize between them. Install flat washers and new QU95035 lock nut and torque to 30 to 40 foot-pounds. Use QT5500 bearing packer to pack bearings in TK4907 wheel bearing kit. Install wheel bearing cups with QT1802 cup driver and QT1116 driver handle. Then install QU50225 wheel seal with QT1508 installer. 
Lubricate the wheel seal and install brake rotors with new wheel studs. Slide hub assembly onto spindle. For non-automatic hubs, install the thrust washer and inner spindle nut and torque to 50 foot-pounds while rotating the hub with QT1011 socket. Then back off no more than 90 degrees to set and play. Install outer washer and nut and torque to at least 50 foot-pounds. For worn automatic hubs, Install thrust washer and torque inner nut to 30 foot pounds while rotating hub. Back off and retorque to 30 foot pounds, then back off one quarter to one third turn. Install outer lock washer and nut and tighten snug with QT1258 nut tool. Tighten the three set screws. Using part number QU15256, bolt locking washers. <clears throat> install the outer portion of the automatic locking hub, being sure to also install the gasket onto this. Reinstall the brake pads and then the brake caliper, being sure to reinstall the slides, the springs, and then the retention bolt. <clears throat> 